Welcome back, WNST, Towson, Baltimore, and Baltimore, positive. We, uh, we're positively into the football offseason. We're going to do something here that we haven't done in a long time. And I don't just mean like the Maryland Crab Cake Tour presented by the Maryland Lottery, because we're going to do that soon. Um, I'd say I haven't been to Royal Farms recently, but I have. Um, I've shopped in my places. The one thing I haven't done with anybody other than Don Moeller, and I hope to never do it again, is just talk baseball. Uh, Luke Jones joins us now. He is our uh, baseball insider coverer. He has witnessed far more losing um, than, than I care to talk about or remember. Um, when's the last time you and I had a baseball conversation? Did we do a strike conversation? Or did we even just avoid that? Because in football season, we tend to do things that are important and teams that play and try to win and stuff like that. It's probably been September or October just because, I mean – I don't know how, but I don't know about you. First of all, I fully expected a lockout. Uh, I think that was evident long before we got to the end of the 2021 season. I think uh, the, the simple fighting that we saw in restarting baseball in the midst of the pandemic in 2020 uh, was a, very much a preview of what we were going to see. And the reality is, Nestor, nothing matters right now in terms of the lockout because it's the off season anyway. Now, in other markets, what it, is it more noticeable because you're not seeing as much you know, you're not seeing any transactions at the major league level. Sure, in Baltimore, uh, with the Orioles in the midst of, of this long rebuild, you know, it, it's not drastically different in terms of the hot stove, right? I mean, you know, they made a couple signings right before the lockout started, you know, Runet Odor and a couple others. Is but... there even a hot stove anymore? Like, in well, the way I, I, that, like, like, I don't know what the F they're doing, any of them, any of them. They're locking out, they're, like, the shit that I that upset me 40 years ago, the stuff that 28 years ago, I sat here for nine months in the middle of a strike and talked about that at the beginning of my career. I, I can't eat like the distraction, the shell game. They're playing their little crab game. Their claw. The, the Orioles have decided to use this left field thing as something they're going to crow about and be excited about. And it is a distraction. It's a, hey, don't look at the fact that we lost 100 games. Don't look at the fact that tickets aren't on sale. Don't look on, at the fact that our website doesn't have any of our players' names on it. Forget all of that. We're going to fix Camden Yards, make it better than it was. Like, I, what's really important is that they win, they show up, they're community forward, they have people in the organization that are out in the community. They, they've abandoned all of that, and their PR move, the, the local team's PR move has nothing to do with baseball. or I guess it does with fly balls, but people are arguing about this, Luke. It's, yeah. it's the most baseball-y, normal, nasty Nestor 1996 thing that I can imagine. People are like, hey, they're moving the fences back. What do you think? And I'll be honest with you, man. I don't think much, right? I mean, ask anybody. I, I just don't think much. So, like, do I think there was any thought put into it? Sure. Was it by baseball nerds? Probably. Where's the owner? Where's the next owner? Where's the stadium authority? Who's paying for it? Like all of that has come out because they just sort of news dropped this last week about left field. And I know who's really upset. The people that built Camden Yards, the people that are baseball purists and like all that. I don't know enough to be angry so i'm leaving it with you because i don't know that i'm going to have an opinion i'm yeah. really interested in your opinion on the hottest story in town which is they're going to move the fence back what's that going to mean i'm thinking it's going to mean they're still going to suck unless they get better baseball players that's what uh, i think it's going to mean and, and i think that's totally fair i i think look I'll, I'll say this my first blush reaction to it was i didn't like it because i do love camden yards strictly speaking about it from a baseball ballpark standpoint historian historian we know uh, about uh, i mean my goodness the organization itself brands camden yards as the ballpark that forever changed baseball that's a trademark that they have uh, you you see it in the <laughs> press releases uh, literally they every five years from 2012 when they had the 20th anniversary 20 uh, the 25th in 2017 they're going to do it again in 22 they've had a, a jersey patch for anniversaries for the ballpark i mean they have this has been the one thing that they've tried to market. Now, I'm not going to say that they've marketed it well, but they've attempted to market. And it is something that if you're talking about someone that has done something similar to what you did several years back, 
someone who has gone to, to want to see different ballparks, Camden Yards has been a destination in that sense. I love uh, when, like, as... when I argue with people about what makes a great ballpark. I've been to all of them. So like, and you probably haven't. So yeah. like, th- there's that. Like, Moeller's been to five ballparks. Oh, Camden Yards! Arr, arr, arr. He, he and I got into it last week, and I'm like, dude, like, uh, th- th- this, this isn't like hallowed ground. Camden Yards, to me, and I'll say this over and over again loudly, it's nothing special. Nothing special has happened there other than Cal Ripken, and that was a generation ago. It is not Lambeau Field or Fenway Park. Sure. It it, it doesn't have – it has that cachet around here because it's ours, and ours is better than yours, and I ain't never been to Pittsburgh, but our stadium is better than Pittsburgh. It's better than Kansas City. It's better than Minnesota, Colorado. Uh, I've been to all these ballparks. They're all fine. They're all fine. They're they're fine. I love baseball. My last name's Aparicio. They're fine. But I'm trying to figure out what they're really trying to do because they're not trying to make money. They're not trying to sell more seats. They're trying to affect the game to think that they're going to get pitchers And I keep thinking to myself, I've been watching this really closely for a long time as of you, professionally. You get paid to do this. And there's not been one pitcher they ever would have signed that said, I'm not coming to Camden Yards because of the the porch. The reason they weren't coming to Camden Yards is they weren't going to pay them. Like, so the the real issue is here, if you want Max Scherzer, sure, you can move the stadium in, out, all back. But the first thing is, where's the $250 million it's going to take to sign him? And let's start with that. And unless you're willing to do that, you can move your fences anywhere you want. So if you're moving it for the next kid from Oregon State you're going to draft or Cal State Fullerton and you're going to bring in or whatever, I'll hear that. But it's going to affect both ways of the play. And I like for me as a aesthetic thing, that's where Moeller, oh, you can't touch Camden Yards. It's hello. I don't feel that way about it. I mean, I, I just don't. I don't feel that way about anything about baseball or sports anymore. I, I feel like do the right thing for the fans, do the right thing to make money, whatever. This feels like they're trying to F with the competitive arc of things in some way that feels a little overreaching to me because it's not manageable. You you know, you're going to move the fence back, but you move it back for everybody. And if you think that plays better for you, okay, it's just going to mean a lot more flyouts. And somebody said more triples. My ass, my ass, more triples. Okay, how many triples were hit there last year? There are going to be six more triples hit there this year. Come on, man. Triples. Stop with that. That's, that's stupid. I don't even hear that. Well, there will be more balls in play. Okay, uh, I mean, so I, you get a better you know, I, I, Well, my, so, so here's how I feel about this. First of all, I, I think I will disagree a little bit with it saying it's fine. I think aesthetically it's held up as one of the most beautiful ballparks in baseball. Now, have there been great memories made there uh, in terms of lots of winning and playoff games and things of that nature? No, of course not. So I, I'm not going to disagree. I just with don't think it's part. a place you can't alter. You know what oh, I mean? Oh, sure, like, sure. I, well, I, I, just didn't feel like I agree. Not, yeah. I agree because, uh, I mean, I just did a simple Google search. 15 minutes before we started our conversation here, uh, the Giants just a couple years ago moved their ball. You know, they had their bullpens down the foul lines. They moved them to the outfield. Uh, I mean, you talk about that ballpark in San Francisco. That's been held up as one of the gold standard parks in the National League. In the They're way we all talk very about nice yeah. in their own way. So, but I think, yeah. yeah, I think what's interesting, though, in looking at this, because, I, you know, I, again, I did a simple Google search. So Oracle, I, th- I think it's called Oracle Park now. I mean, all, all these corporate names. It's so special, you don't even know what they're called anymore. Right, exactly, exactly. But they, so the dimensions were altered there a little bit. Marlins Park has altered dimensions uh, in recent years. Uh, but what's interesting about it is for the most part, when you look at it, it's mostly been parks that have tried to create a friendlier run scoring environment. Uh, City Field years back when the Mets, uh, I mean, that was the, a big story when the Mets opened that ballpark, how cavernous it was, how big it was. And, and it just, you know, it's great for pitching, but, you know, you, you want balance. So I will say this, and I'll say this as someone who's watched a lot of baseball at Camden Yards over the last 10 years, uh, has seen the game. More than was, almost anybody. Like, I over mean, the last 10 years, the, your ass has been in a seat physically there as much as any human being, as much as any yeah. season ticket holder, as much as anybody. So that's why, you know, whatever you say goes for me. 
Well, I mean, uh, you know, not what it doesn't go for me, but I'd like to think I've watched a lot of baseball there and I've seen, you know, well, and let's be clear when I started covering the team in 2010, home runs were a big thing then. Let's, let's be, uh, let's be very clear about that. I'm not saying that it was 1975's run scoring environment where you had two to one games all the time. Uh, and, you were and watching Louis Tion throw dead hitters. ball with sudden Sam in 60. Yeah, right? exactly. Exactly. So, but I will say this, and as much as I do love Camden Yards just from an aesthetic standpoint, and I do think it's a beautiful, beautiful place to watch a game, and I do think the park has held up well, aesthetically speaking, over 30 years, there are a lot of home runs, and there are a lot of home runs in left field. And how many times have you and I talked about this, and I speak about this as someone who still loves baseball. Let's be very clear. This is not me saying I'm turned off by the game by any means. But we have talked a lot about the three true outcomes and home runs just becoming so much more prevalent and strikeouts because pitchers are throwing absolute gas and, and it's max effort all the time. You know, I, I, I admit, and a lot of it, sure, can I say some of it has to do with the Orioles being really lousy the last few years? I'm not going to say that that isn't part of it, but just in a general sense, the number of what feels like routine fly balls off the bat that I have seen go out in left center where it's 364 feet. It, I call that it, the Chris Hoyles mark. You know, that, that yeah. was a, you know, Chris Hoyles hit the ball there and it always went yeah. out. It's a bit much. So from a standpoint of just speaking in terms of baseball and potential for more balls in play, you know, I, I mean, the triples thing, will there be more triples? Sure. Will there be more doubles? I, I mean, to me, that's something that's a little more interesting. Uh, do I think it gives the Orioles this massive advantage? Of course not. Because to, to your point, both sides are going to deal with that. Do I think it could create a more interesting ballpark in terms of in-game action? Sure. Do I look at the mock-ups that that have you know that the Orioles put out late last week uh, and look at that? And I, I liked it a little bit more. You know, the, seeing the you know the the mock-ups, the draw the drawings of what it's going to look like. It actually looked better than I thought it might. I, I do think it's interesting, and I I will think it, there will be some player safety tracking that needs to go on with uh, the bullpen. You know, that angle in left center field if the left fielder uh, is trying to make a play in the left center gap. But I could say the same thing about center field at Fenway, where, you know, you, you have the high wall, you know, to the and right of the monster. And never change that because it's Fenway. Well, uh, but, right. but I, I mean, Fenway's been changed, though. I mean, they put seats on top of the but monster. You don't mess I with mean, the pesky pole. You know what I mean? You don't you, those right. things you don't mess with. That's what I'm saying. When it comes to camping yeah. yards, I don't have the where as long as you're not tearing the warehouse down. And, you know, I agree. would have made a case for that. But, like, I, I – yeah, I think if you walk in it and you had never been there before, you might never know it was there. Now, how they handled it, which is apparently people that had seats in those seats are now gone. And yeah. they found out reading about it on the news. I mean, the Orioles F everything up. So there is no expectation that, um, you know, John Angelos is going to appear at any point, do the right thing at any point, lead at any point, or that any of the minions that uh, that that run the place at this point are going to get out in front of it. I, I mean, God bless them. I mean, and I know taxpayers are paying for it, blah, blah, blah. I, I don't think it's any big deal, but I do think from a baseball perspective to have you make a case for it, I'll hear that. I mean, people ask me, what do I think of it? I think I'm probably not going to go to the games next year anyway. So well, I, I, it's disingenuous for me. But from a baseball perspective, I'm just guessing there'll be more flyouts and less home runs, right? I mean, and you'll say there'll be more, a lot more doubles and a couple more triples and that they would have a better chance of not hurting the feelings of their own young pitchers. Well, there's that. And, and this is where you made the point about Max Scherzer. And let me be, be very clear. When you're talking about the most extreme examples, of course, you know, I, I you're, you're not going to, th this isn't something that's going to make pitching be a discount for them now or anything crazy like that. I will say this, if you're willing to pay market, do I think this could be something that will be less of a tiebreaker going against them? Sure. Uh, I, I can tell you right off the bat, Nestor, I, I know pitchers who have pitched for the Orioles, whether you're talking about some of their young guys, you know, guys like uh, Kevin Gosman moving on and, and becoming an all-star pitcher elsewhere, or, or whether you're talking about guys like, you know, a Jeremy Hellickson, Wade Miley. I mean, guys that they've acquired at the deadline, you know, guys that are, you know, uh, not even second tier, third tier type guys. Uh, will this make it easier to attract some of those guys? If you're trying to talking about a one-year deal, if you're assuming you're paying market, things of that nature. Can I think, do I think that could help them a little bit? 
Sure. Do I think that's going to be the difference between being a hundred loss team and a perennial playoff contender? Of course not. So then why do it? You, you do it. Well, why? You want less home runs in your ballpark for your fans? I mean, there's a part of that that like if chicks dig the long ball and there's three extra home runs every night at Camden Yards or two or whatever that magic number would be. I don't know, man. It, it, it just feels like a card trick to me. It feels like it feels like a party trick. If you if it just feels like like a, a gimmick. Gim, gimmick's the word I'm looking for. I need a thesaurus. It feels like a gimmick. Well, I, well and that's fair. Uh, I, I, hey, I can recall 20 years ago when they moved home plate back at Camden Yards. And remember, they messed with the batter's eye. And, and, you know, I mean, it was one of those things that got panned. The players hated it and they moved it back, uh, you know, the following year. But I, I think... I, again, I don't have a very strong opinion about this, just like you. I, I think it's interesting to talk about in the midst of a lockout, but I thought you would I have a think... strong opinion. Isn't that funny? I thought you'd be you'd you'd have a if you ran the I mean, place, I guess... would you do this or would you not do this? And I guess if you don't have to pay for it, you do whatever you want. But uh, that, well, that's I mean, really... I... The, the question is, is this good for Orioles business? Is this good for Orioles fans? Is this about winning to talk to about John Harbaugh's way of doing it? Is it about winning? I, I don't know. I don't know what it's about. I guess it was about getting a headline last week that superseded Joe Ortiz and, how, you know, how the, the Ravens have lost six games in a row. The Orioles felt like, let's make some news. And some people are like, who's paying for it? Why are we doing it? Is it necessary to F with seats that nobody are sitting in anyway? There's just all of that. Oh, and by the way, they're on strike. I forgot that part. Let's go back to the original sin, which is they might not play at all. Well, lockout, let's not call it a strike uh, oh, because okay. I'm, I'm very, well, I'm just saying I'm very much, uh, you know, much more empathetic to the players uh, through all of this and, and oh, whatnot. Oh, so you but, like the millionaires more than the billionaires. Okay, sure. It's, it's fine. Well, okay. because they're not all millionaires. You're talking about some of these guys are going to play two years and then they're going to move on. So if they can get a bigger bite at the apple with their very limited or potent, you know, very limited time where they can earn some money playing professional baseball, then more power to them. But, but I, I guess, first of all, Mike Elias and Sigma Dell do not do anything that isn't calculated, data driven. Uh, I don't think they did this, you know, uh, with, with those. I, I think this was more driven from those guys, you know, the baseball side of things more so than John Angelos waking up saying, oh, let's change the dimensions of the ballpark. I don't think it was that. I, I do think it was the baseball side looking at this. I do think it's something that they had thoughts about uh, going all the way back to 2019. I do think they researched it. Uh, I, I do think they feel that there is a net gain, minor as it might be, but a net gain over the long haul that this could be better for them. Uh, does this make the ballpark pit, you know, a, a pitcher-friendly ballpark now? No, because you still have the left-center bullpen. You still have a very advantageous uh, right-field scoreboard that's a, a nice porch for left-handed hitting and has a, always has been. So it's not as though the entire ballpark's going to change. But in left field, does it make things a little more fair to pitchers and, and not just Orioles pitchers, but uh, opposing pitchers as well. Sure. Uh, I, I think it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. And, and as I mentioned, I do think something to monitor will be that sharp angle uh, as you get to the bullpen there. Uh, you know, that, that was something I, I, I kind of figured they'd alter the bullpens a little bit and they still might, maybe they round that angle out a little bit. Uh, I, I think that could be a player safety issue there. Uh, but I mean, we'll see how it plays out. I, I think it'll, I'll say this much, and, and you mentioned it too. I don't think Camden Yards is something that can't be altered at all. I mean, look at the changes Yankee Stadium underwent. Uh, you know, Fenway Park, as we mentioned. I mean, the Green Monster, I mean, Fenway had the big fence in left field, but it wasn't until years later that they slapped green paint on it and started calling it the Green Monster. Uh, Wrigley didn't ha have Ivy originally. You know, I mean, the, these are things that, you know, the ballpark's 30 years old. You know, it, it's okay to change some things here and there. I don't think this is going to make Camden Yards lose its essence from an aesthetic standpoint. Uh, I'm actually intrigued to see uh, how uh, it plays out. Uh, I'm intrigued to see if they made a mistake here and overcorrected. And do we see an adjustment 10 years from now? Because, you know, uh, as I mentioned, a lot of the ballparks that you've seen in recent years where they've altered dimensions have been to make it more run scoring friendly uh, and not the opposite. So so it'll be it'll be interesting in that way. But hey, I mean, home, this has been an extreme homework, uh, homework, home run park for a long time. I don't think anyone would dispute that. And we can all remember going all the way back to the 90s, uh, whether it was opposition Dude, I or drank or, with Mike Messina and Hooters after games. Yeah, and I we mean, would lament like 
All How of many- it. I mean, I was around when they traded for Scott Erickson and Sonny I'm trying Kiki to think. And, you know, having ground ball pitchers and like all of that. If you were a fly ball pitcher, they couldn't yeah. draft you. I- I'm trying to think. Was it Jeff Montgomery who gave up? I'm trying to think. It was an opposing pitcher gave up a, a walk off back in like the mid 90s and flat out said they should blow this place up. Like, you know, I mean, it was just, uh, I mean, that's that's been the opinion of pitchers with home runs, especially. Uh, left field that has been very, very friendly, you know, a seven foot high wall. Some people say it's actually a little shorter than seven feet. You know what I mean? So uh, again, do I think this is going to be a, a cornerstone of the rebuild? If, if it's successful, of course not. You know, let's be very clear about that. Uh, do I think that they did their homework and researched this and pondered it long enough to think that it could be a slight edge for them? Sure. At the same time, there's still a lot of work to be done. And, and, and I'll say this, what was far more consequential to me over the weekend was that the Orioles spent their entire international bonus slot, uh, you know, their, their entire international bonus uh, allotment. And the fact that they gave Braylon Tavera $1.7 million, which is a franchise record. I mean, we're talking about an organization, Nestor, that five or six years ago wasn't even giving six-figure bonuses to international talent. So to see them give out million dollar bonuses and to see them give out six figure bonuses. I'm not saying that's the end all be all, but it's, a, it, it's something, it, it's something that's better than it used to be. And now I'll say this, I'm not going to say that, oh, they're, they're really investing a lot of money because I mean, their payroll is among the lowest in baseball. I understand that, but it's good to see that. And it's good to see them make hay in the Dominican. Uh, you know, they have their Academy, their big uh, complex, their, their building there. And you're starting to see them now. I mean, Tavera was someone that actually shows up in some of the international rankings, you know, not just some guy that you've, uh, look, I, I understand most fans have never heard of him. I'm not going to say I know uh, intimately details about Braylon Tavera, but I do know he's someone that has been highly thought of as a kid who has some potential as a five tool kind of guy down the line. Now, does that mean five years from now he's starring for the Orioles? I have no idea, but it, it that's just another part of what we're looking at here that it's a long process. It's been a very, <laughs> not a very enjoyable process. I think that's obvious. Uh, but, you know, that said, ballpark alterations, you know, we'll see. You know, I, I'm looking forward to seeing what it looks like in real time. Uh, you know, I, I don't think it ruins Camden Yards. Uh, but at the same time, I think it will be interesting to see how it plays because there have been plenty of studies done in a vacuum uh, about ballpark factors. I mean, Jim Palmer for years has talked about the hotel that went up uh, beyond the left center field, you know, p- portion of the ballpark, how that kind of impacted some of the wind patterns and how we haven't seen anyone come close to hit the warehouse you know, since that's happened. So, you know, we'll, we'll see how it plays out, but I don't think this ruins Camden Yards, but I also don't think this is what gets them over the hump to become a, a contender again. I think it's a much, much, much uh, less, you know, it's, pretty insignificant in the grand scheme of things, but I will be curious to see how it makes the the, the in-game action uh, different uh, along the way. We'll get back to our regularly scheduled lockout uh, soon enough. Uh, Luke Jones is here. We're going to talk football all week. Uh, We have divisional play. I'm allegedly going to the Super Bowl. I'm not sure. It's a couple of weeks away. All of Luke's reports, all of his work brought to you by our friends at Royal Farms, real fresh, real fast. I got my coal roofing mug here with my Rofo coffee in it today. Big shout out to Bill. Bill will be here later on. All of our sponsors, uh, Leonard Raskin, the Dennis Colazzo is all going to be around this week as we get ready for more football, more lockout, maybe a little Terps, and uh, Don and I will be talking politics. I'm Nestor. We are WNSD, AM 1570, Towson, Baltimore, and we never stop talking Camden Yards and left field and home runs and chicks digging the long ball.